All right, in this video, I want to talk about setting up the Moog Minotaur in Cubase. Uh, it also will work for the new Siren that was just released, and I believe it also works for the subsequent 37. Pretty much anything that has digitally controlled um, uh, features. Even though it's an analog synth, the knobs are all digitally controlled, in which case they create a Minotaur editor or I assume they have a Syrian editor, uh, and I think I've seen the subsequent 37 editor. Anything that can be considered an editor uh, can be pulled up and worked within Cubase. Now that's what makes these things kind of brilliant, is the fact that they're, um, they're no longer, uh, all the patches can be saved, every knob can be recorded. It's no longer something where you do something one day and come back and it's no longer there the next day. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing you wanna do is you want to register your product. They're gonna send you a link to downloads. And the first thing you wanna do is run um, the, well, probably the firmware to make sure that you're up to date, but let's just go with the editor. And when you run the editor, um, the very first thing, in my case, I'm on OS 10. Uh, you'll see this install, this is standard install screen, you do the install screen. But it was about the second or third screen in, which is kind of really important to understand, and that's this installation type. You get standalone application, sure. You get an AAX, an AAX instrument, which is for Pro Tools. You get an audio units, uh, virtual instrument, and just regular plug-in. Um, we get RTAS, which is also for Pro Tools. VST and VST3, both of those are for Cubase. I suggest using VST3. I'll explain what these are, but you know, honestly, the virtual instruments are the only ones that are important. The, the plugins themselves don't work much well for Cubase. So, once that's run, you open up Cubase and you create a new instrument. Now, there are two ways to handle virtual instruments in Cubase. I guess there could be a third way, but let's just go with the two main ways. One of the main ways to do this is to go into under studio menu audio connections. Oh, it should be noted, I'm, I'm on Cubase 10 right now. So Cubase 10, this works in nine also. And in audio connections, you have something called external instruments. And in external instruments, what that's doing is it's handling both your MIDI and your audio. Now there's a benefit to that. You end up with one track that handles all that stuff. The negative is if you need to print that audio from that synth, you have to basically print the audio, either freeze it or, or, or bounce it somehow. And I find that with the virtual instruments, it slows my system down. So I don't do it that way. I basically do it two, with two tracks. I create an instrument track, and in this instrument track, I select the plugin. Under synth, I've got the Moog Minotaur editors. Pick your outputs. In my case, I'm going to my, um, what I call my master bus output. And then you add the track. Perfect. Then the editor pops up. So in theory, you have the Minotaur. Now in the settings, I think it's really important to look at the Minotaur settings. Uh, I have X Echo MIDI on. Um, what you're doing is you're sending MIDI through Cubase, through that track, into the Minotaur editor. And I found if you turn it off, you get no sound. So that's kind of a problem. So make sure you go into the Minotaur editor under settings, echo MIDI, and select on. And you are good to go. All these knobs are now available to you. What's even cooler is this unit, besides having its own built-in sounds, bass sounds, by the way, it's good important to note that the Minotaur actually will not play it will at some point um, stop playing high notes. It's something that they built in. The new Siren is basically the same thing as the Minotaur, except without range limits. Um, the Minotaur hits a certain point and it no longer plays. All right, so you've got the Minotaur instrument track set up. Now, if you want to print this track, you still need one other thing. Um, I add a audio track. And I make sure that this audio track is a stereo track. And I'm coming in on my case, actually no, it's a mono track. I'm coming in on my Universal Apollo. Uh, I'm coming in on um, the second input. So you can set up to however you want, but mine's on the second input. And I'm gonna name it. 
Uh, I'm going to call it Minotaur Audio and add the track. Now, with these two tracks, there are uh, basically you're going to go out to the input of the Minotaur. But why aren't we hearing anything? Well, it's because you don't have this thing on monitor. If I need to record it, I just go and hit record, and I've got my track. I'm going to record MIDI. Fine. Then if you go to the, the audio track, you just record that audio track. Boom. And now, instead of trying to freeze it, you're recording the audio. And you can see it recording right now. Um, really important to set up that way. I mean, of course you can go up here and do the, the bounce selection. But I find that I get, I get lots of problems. It just, it, um, I get the, the spinning wheel of death from Mac. I, I don't know, just for whatever reason, this is easier for me. So that's how you have it. Also, I can see the levels. I can, be, I can increase and decrease the levels in this way. It's much better for me. All right, so that is it. That's the Minotaur editor. You've got the main panel, the under the hood, which is all the extra stuff, and then the extended, which combines those two. So it's all right there. And again, the beautiful thing about this, the most wonderful thing about the way this works is that you can connect any other synth. And in this case, I'm playing with the Moog Model D on my iPad, triggering from keys, but I can also change the cutoff. So it's hard to see here, but the cutoff on the and I've model I've basically mapped every single knob of the Minotaur to the Model D. So essentially I have now a Moog Minotaur and a Model D right here on my desktop. Not some big gun, bunch of gear off to the left or right that doesn't save patches. All patches can be saved. All movements can be recorded. It's like suddenly now we have Moog inside the synth. Any questions beyond this, uh, write down below. But basically, that's how you set up Cubase. I was amazed at how little information is out there. They show you all kinds of ways of setting up the Minotaur on with Live, Ableton Live, but nothing with Cubase and nothing with Logic or DP. And with that, that's the end of the video. Uh, good luck with working with Moog Minotaur. It is a brilliant little synth.